just helping people understand that this stuff that all of us teach, every person on this, all of us, this small group here, we constantly are trying to teach people how to use the internet and use the online sector to build their business. And I know a couple of y'all that are on this call for a fact are having some of your best months ever. But I also know a lot of my friends and a lot of my colleagues and a lot of people that I don't know anything about are struggling to eat. And as I told people, you know, their business didn't fail last week or last month, their business failed two years ago. So here's how I kind of want to begin with my funny mask that it seems everybody is wearing. And I still probably can talk loud enough to get my message through on this, but let's see, is Barry, I see your message, Barry. Okay. There we go. We have a photo we can maybe use later. Let me look at what you're sending me, Barry. Why is that not opening? Copy. Let me check this out real quick, Barry. Free report. Okay, I'll check this out in a little bit. There's a lot of things that we'll work on there. Okay, guys. So I'm going to dive in. And I'm going to say this. I'm going to read from my phone. Not that I'm going to read, but it's, it's one quick little message I took a screenshot of that says, to still have an income during this challenging period is a huge blessing. And I think all of us believe that to have an income in any global catastrophe is a blessing. But I also believe, again, I know for a fact, Mel and Beverly, both of you on here are doing pretty well. And it's all because, again, people are playing in the world that we've played in for a very long time. I personally know that people are coming to me more than ever wanting a lot of its email marketing so many people are coming and here's the thing about helping people with email marketing it does seem challenging to people that don't live in the world that we live in but we literally first so here's here's a little bit of a backstory when i first got in this business and didn't know anything about the internet and one of my friends told me that a prospect could opt into a a landing page or a website's what I called it. And then every person that opted in would get a sequence of messages in a seven or 10 day order. And all you had to do is write those messages one time. And then every person that opted in the following day, the following day, they would get these messages. I was like, holy shit, that's possible. There's something on the internet that exists to where when, when I get a lead, I don't have to manually send them an email and then manually follow up and then do it again. That, that's possible. And part of the reason why I've crushed it and dominated this sector in pretty much every single facet is because a lot of people that hear that, they're like, oh, that's cool. Me, I'm like, holy shit. I know how business works. I know that the fortune is in the follow up. I know that if I work super hard and tailor a beautiful message that is dialed into my prospects, and I write it one time, and then I constantly send people there, send people there, send people there, send people there, and then all of a sudden, every 24 hours, or every 36 hours, or every nine hours, or every two hours, or every 15 hours, whatever I want it, people can get these messages, and now things have gotten more advanced to where I can tailor the message depending on what link they click, depending on what email they click, all behavioral based. And to me, that's an art of science to generate revenue to where you work really hard, you put something together once, and then you just set it and you rinse and repeat the formula in the process. So to me, I still think that's absolutely extraordinary. And there's some challenges of understanding email marketing and I've certainly mastered that, mainly just through spending outrageous amounts of money and getting it wrong and figuring out what I need to do to get it right. But I say that because there are people flocking to email marketing like crazy, especially the restaurant business right now. How do we get our gift cards out to people? How do we get our, um, our pickup or our delivery menus out to people? Right now is the greatest time I've ever seen in my life, and I haven't been involved in the internet marketing industry certainly my whole life, but all the time I've been involved in the internet marketing industry, right now is sick. Right now, if you don't have all the clients you want, if you're not increasing your prices, that 
make you feel a little bit bad for what people are paying. And it's not about being greedy and, and increasing your prices to a large capacity. It's just about there's only so much of this knowledge that's available. Let me share a little bit another side story. I, don't, I never know where I'm going with this stuff, but I hope some of it's helpful. So I had someone come to me about three weeks ago, and they wanted a very specific set of skills when it came to sales funnels and when it came to software as a service, SaaS, and certainly when it came up to the follow-up and how to onboard their new people that received the demo. And they gave me all these credentials that they needed, and I sent them back a price of what I would do it for, and the gentleman comes back to me and says, oh, oh that's crazy. I can't believe that you think that we would pay something like that. And I said, unfortunately, my workload is that excessive right now. In order for me to get involved, it's going to cost a little bit more. I said, oh, and I'll, oh, sorry, I kind of missed part of the story. But after he said that my dollar amount was obsessive, he also said he had a lot of other applicants that he was going to work with. And so I promise, and I've told this story a few times since, I promise I'm not saying this condescending or any other way. I replied to him and said, I would love to know other people that can bring to the table what I can because my workload is over the top right now. And if, if you don't mind sharing, would I possibly be able to work with some of your applicants? I'll even pay you to let me know. Now, I'm not saying it arrogantly, but I'm saying it confidently. I don't know a lot of other people that have the skills that I do, that have the skills that a lot of you guys do as well. And I have these skills because I've built these funnels, I've built these email sequences, I've put all of these components together for myself, I've done it for our customers and our clients, but not a lot of people have the capability to not only build a sales funnel, but to build one that actually converts, and then to build up a follow process that also delivers the product that people are buying in a seamless manner. Not a lot of people have all that stuff. And long story short, the guy comes back to me and says, you're right. I couldn't find anybody else that could do what you could do. And I'll hire you for the dollar amount that you requested. This is unprecedented times for what we're seeing in the economy, but it's also unprecedented times because people do have money on the sidelines. Not everybody is, is broke right now. What people are worried about is the future revenue that they need to get. And again, I'll, I'll say it again. If you guys don't have all the clients that you want right now, and then I don't feel that you're following what I'm teaching or the, the, the exact blueprint to how this works. Because even on Upwork right now, we were charging anywhere from three to $5,000 to build sales funnels out. We haven't charged less than $15,000 to do the exact same thing. Well, not the exact. We add a little more sophistication to it to make certain that we can justify what we're charging. But we don't do this for less than $15,000. And people are almost fighting over getting on calls with me and paying me and going through the process to work with us. Never before have we literally had a waiting line of people waiting to throw $15,000, hundreds of thousands. I mean, this stuff mounts up. So my point is what I, I read from my phone, and I don't want to mess it up, to still have an income during these challenging periods is a huge blessing. We're having our best months ever right now. And here's the thing about how money works. And it's important to understand money because I think a lot of us forget this part. $1,000 six months ago is not nearly as powerful as $1,000 today. $1,000 today buys you a lot. Rather, it's advertising. It buys you a shitload of ads because all of ads, YouTube, Facebook, PPC, it's all on a bid. Every single thing is on a bid, guys. That's how every single ad works on the world as long as you're doing conversions. Who gives a shit about views and likes? Conversions are what, what this business is about. Conversions are on a bidding process. The first thing that most companies cut is their marketing when the shit hits the fan in the economy. As opposed, if their back end is built out right, that's the last thing they, they should cut. You look at like Ruth Chris, one of the more prominent steak restaurants, they're emailing me that for every $55 you spend in gift cards, we'll give you another $30 in gift cards. So literally, they're giving me 60% or close to 60% off their food. And if it's a place you're going to use and eat at anyway, people are having fire sales everywhere. And you know how they're making those offers to me? Through email marketing. So I didn't mean this to be about email marketing. It needs to be more about sales funnels, but it also needs to be more about there are business owners flocking to outsourcing websites, flocking to all types of places, trying to figure out 
okay, maybe I should get my business online, or maybe there is something to this online marketing, and they want someone who can deliver results, they want someone who's compassionate and is willing to take the time to get on a call and explain it to them, but where are the people that are positioned better than, I almost, better than any doctor, better than any lawyer, I mean, the courthouses are closed in the States, but we're positioned so well to have, to, to literally build our business. This is the, the fundamental principles to where rock bottom could be the place that you pick yourself up and say, look, the economy went down. Everybody was scared shitless, wondering how they were going to have their business survive. And then these gurus of internet marketers that can't stand watching Grey's Anatomy, but they sure as hell like watching um, ads on YouTube about how to convert higher on their websites and sales funnels and email marketing. And I just think that this is a really, really big opportunity. I get messages from some of you guys and even outstanding videos from Beverly sometimes that talks about with all the uncertainty that's taking place in this world, with all the people that don't know where their next paycheck's coming from, this group and you guys on here right now, following the procedures and steps and offering to other businesses, our expertise is something people are paying a premium right now because there's a lot more of them than there is of us. So with that, that's kind of my rant. That's kind of where I wanna go with this, but I really wanna emphatically drive home. This is the time, this is the opportunity. And if I can help you position yourself, if I can support you, endorse you in any way, shape or form, as I've continued to mention, I'll absolutely do that. So I yield the floor. Who has, who has questions, concerns? Um, am I wrong? Am I right? I have questions, but I feel like I always have stuff to say. <laughs> no, that's okay. I want to hear them. I want to see if I can help. Well, okay. So first, my mini rant is, is that um, everybody who thought I was crazy for leaving a steady paycheck and going into business for myself now thinks I'm a genius. And so I just love that. And I don't want to take a moment to gloat, but I'm kind of gloating right now. <laughs> so, um, so something really fun is, is that, you know, this is such a great opportunity to teach your kids that if you're doing well, you've got to spread the love around. And so I asked my kids, I'm like, you guys, this is a great time to feed other people who are teaching things. So what do you want to learn? And so we now have a online personal trainer and we've got online French lessons and we have, what else do we learn? A painting. We're doing online painting classes. And so we're out there just sewing into our local community. We have two restaurants that are open in our area, only two that do walkthrough. And so we literally went and got food and left $50 tips for everybody who's in there because they told us that we were literally their only order today, which I think is really sad. And, um, and so it's really great. Like it's teaching, you put it back out there. You got to put it back out there. You have to put it back out there. So that's been awesome. Um, what you are saying about email marketing is absolutely correct. I, I had hit this bump in email marketing where I was getting frustrated at my open rates. People are literally doing nothing but waiting for their next email so that they can open it and read it right now. I mean, the open rates are ridiculously through the roof. Um, emojis and subject lines are completely working. And I know that I, I was told you this before, Jeremy, but just Mel, Barry, if you guys are doing email follow-up, people are looking for friendly messages that are giving them information that they can use, even if it's just a little bit to help their business, to help their mind, to help their body, just to help them grow in some capacity because sitting in front of Netflix sucks. So I'm just throwing that out there. I mean, it's, email is where it's at for me right now. Like it's totally where it's at. Um, so that having been said, um, I need some help with redirect ads because I don't remember how to do them because it's been so long and I wasn't sure if you had a video for that, but, um, so through, oh, and Facebook ads, by the way, super cheap right now. Did like you get that video I sent you Beverly. Oh, you know, I was going to ask you about that. You sent me a video and I clicked on it, but it wouldn't open for me. And, and I was going to, I meant to text you and say, Hey, where was this supposed to go? But I got pulled off on something else. Um, let me see if I can get it to open right now. Cause I, I know, um, I don't know if everybody's kind of having squirrely internet issues, but I think it's because 
Let me oh, just see. Guys. It's going to open it? now, isn't it? Is it working? Yeah, it's slowly loading, but it is loading. There it is. Facebook. Oh, Facebook ad hack. Oh, I could have used that. Okay. Let me, I want to stop and teach that real quick. Can I jump in and do that? It'll take please, me, please it'll take do. three minutes. Yeah, okay. go ahead. This is one of the greatest hacks and it's been around for a long time. It's the reason why I don't have a lot of my stuff public because I don't want people doing what I do or following all my stuff. But this is insane, guys. So if you go to this URL, um, I'll, pu I'll, pu I'll put the URL in the chat in a second. But everyone sees my screen okay? Uh, I disappeared. I disappeared? Hang on. Uh, I can see you. Mel? Yeah, I can see you, mate. Okay, so what I'm gonna type in here is Tony Robbins, but I can type in anybody I want. But I can type Tony Robbins in, and I can go look at every ad he's running right now, exactly what the ad is, I can look at exactly what the landing page that they're sending people to. I can see every single component of this ad. Oh, there you are. So this is just insane how you can look at every ad people are running. Look at every landing page people are running for your competitors. So let's say that we go to ClickFunnels. We can click on there. We can go to Platform. We can look at Facebook, Instagram, audience networks, Messenger. We can look at every single ad ClickFunnels is running. We can look at the landing pages that they're running them on. So again, it doesn't necessarily have to be about ClickFunnels or Tony Robbins. You can type anything you want inside of here and go immediately to all of the ads that they have active, how long they've been running them for, what pages that they're sending people to, this is one of the greatest hacks of all time because one of the largest problems I personally see people making is they don't know what type of ads to run. That didn't work. <laughs> Look at that handsome devil. So, but if people aren't running paid traffic and paid ads, especially now, like Beverly said, because Facebook ads are cheaper than ever, but you also need to be running the right Facebook ads to the right landing pages. And it's all about who's my competitors. I did a couple interviews a few weeks ago and they asked me, well, what's the first thing we should do to get our business going? Step one, figure out exactly who your competitors are and then go through every single thing they have, reverse engineer their process and then make yours better. That's all I do when I'm building funnels for people is I go look at their competitors, reverse engineer the process of their competitors, make the components and the pieces better and get paid very, very, very well for that. So, oh, I said I would put that link. Let me go get this link, guys, for you and drop it in there. Mel, it might be a little different for you. Message me if it doesn't work. But anyhow, this is one of the greatest hacks that you could ever have. It's been around for about a year now, but it can work against you when you have your ads working really well. Your competitors will do this to you. So one of the ninja things we do that I really don't talk about publicly much is we'll have Facebook pages that doesn't correlate to us, that people won't even know that it's us, and that's where we'll run a bulk of our ads from. Now, when you see the ads, obviously you can go to the page, and you can figure all of our ads out, but it's just one way that we can kind of cloak our strategy. But that is a huge, huge hack, knowing exactly what type of ads, are they running video ads, are they running image ads, run very similar image ads, if that's what they're running. It shows you the copy. Let me show you. Real, one more time real quick. It shows you the exact copy inside of the ad. So all you have to do is, is model what they have. I mean, it, it gives you the game. This pulls the curtain back and Facebook gives you the game to what everybody's ads are. It sucks for you when they start using it against you, but it is a massive, massive, Think about if you had a prospect that you wanted to work with. This is insane. So you have a prospect that you want to work with and they're like, I have a chiropractor clinic or I have a gym or I have a dental practice and I'm wanting to run ads. I hear this online thing is working for people. And 
you do a little consultation with them and then you go to Facebook, like I just showed you, you go to their competitors that's around them and you pull their competitors top five ads or top three ads, you take screenshots of everything. Here's what your competitors are doing. Here's their best performing ads. If you'd like me to model their strategy that they've already learned from of what doesn't work and get you results, this is what I charge. Do you think they're gonna say no? They're just gonna say, well, how do I send the money? Mm -hmm. Okay, Beverly, I'm sorry, I cut you off. No, but that's okay. That was literally the best thing ever. Like, I, I have a feeling that that will be, I'll be sending you a video next week going, Jeremy. <laughs> well, I, I thought March was good. Here comes April. But that link, and let me put the link that I sent Beverly over here as well. If anybody wants the link, it's literally freefunnel.com ad slash hack, but I'm gonna put the link right here. It works for everyone but my Aussies. They don't get access. So just kidding now. Only, only people from New Zealand, right? <laughs> I just put test so it would break the link up a little bit in there so that wouldn't be confusing to everybody. Okay, Beverly, I'm sorry, please go ahead. Okay, so um, with one, well actually with two of my clients, um, we just, we've been doing Facebook ads, you know, and so it increased the traffic flow to their website exponentially. But the problem is, is that the, the actual sales pages on their website suck and they don't want to change them which bugs me but whatever we it's just an obstacle right so i know that the magic is is to hit up those people that go to their website with the redirect ad so one of the clients already have a pixel on their website and they do redirect ads they're just not good so one of my questions is is first of all can you remind me how to do a redirect ad either by showing me or sending me a video, whichever works. And the other is, is that, um, am I able to, like I have admin access to their Facebook account. So am I able to copy their pixel and use it in a separate advertising account without causing all sorts of Facebook glitches? Or is it like one ads account per pixel? Like, I'm not sure how that would work it's supposed to be one ad account per pixel. Now, hmm. please don't think, I, I don't claim myself to be a Facebook ad genius by any means. I, I know a lot about the ad strategy. Facebook has a pretty good chat system on their business manager that you can chat with them because the last thing you wanna do is not be in compliant with Facebook. They, Facebook is insane about shutting people down. It's like, we don't need your money and they probably don't, but anyhow, I would chat with Facebook to the best of my knowledge. A pixel is one per ad account. One per, well, actually no. So this is an important component to any Facebook ad strategy. You have your page, your Facebook page that you're running your ads from, and you can have two or three or four or five ad accounts to one Facebook page. The right. only thing that separates those are different payment methods. And anybody who's ran Facebook ads for more than 10 minutes knows that you must have two or three ad accounts, meaning a PayPal connected and two different credit cards connected because if they kill one of your ad accounts, which they absolutely are notorious for doing, you have some backup accounts that you can keep your ads running or you can at least download your ads and have that metrics inside of there. But to the best of my knowledge, and again, I'm, I'm certainly not a Facebook ad expert by any means, I would chat with them one page per pixel and then when we're talking about the retargeting components of this yeah you have a general pixel obviously that goes on the the head of the page if it's wordpress or that just goes in the the main area in settings if it's click funnels and then after that it's parameters per the conversions so you'll have a a different facebook you'll you'll have a snippet so you'll have the the main pixel the main snippet of code and just for other people watching this, all a pixel is is numbers and letters that you copy from Facebook and you paste on your website. It literally monkeys can do this stuff. The complexity comes in a little bit when you're tracking the conversions to the page. And let me draw a picture for that. So let's say that this is 
our opt-in page right here that people are opting in. And then we'll have our, um, our thank you page. And we'll also put a button on here for a one-time offer. So if they click that button, they'll come over here to uh, order page and they'll be pitched something on an order page to buy. And then you'll come back over here and we might have another OTO that has an order page. And then we'll have a thank you page to help people logically justify what we just sold them. Now, the general pixel, all you'll do is you'll, put, you'll paste that in one area on the head of your website or on the settings page of your website. And that general pixel will be on every single page. Beverly, that makes perfect sense? Okay. And then yeah. now's where we start tracking. And tracking is we put, we put this general pixel on, on the head of our WordPress website or we put it in the settings area of our ClickFunnels page and it's on every page. Now we have to go into the individual pages under the custom tracking codes. And I can show you guys exactly where to do that if you want me to do that as well. And when you go into there, you'll, you'll go to your Facebook ad manager and you'll get a snippet of code and that snippet of code that would go on this page because all this is is an opt-in. We're gonna call this just a conversion that doesn't have any value to it. So now Facebook knows that a conversion was made right here and they can track that in the ads manager. Now on the next page, we're gonna put a different snippet of code and we're gonna put a conversion. So this code is gonna be different from this code. We're gonna to go to the ads manager, we're gonna get a different conversion pixel that uses like a, that has a dollar amount and whatever you're selling this product for $9.95, $9,975, you'll put that dollar amount in the parameters and then you'll copy the code and you'll put it on the tracking area on this specific page. And you'll do that same thing with each page because the only way a pixel works, just the simplest term that it actually is simple, Facebook knows when somebody hits this URL with this code on here, a conversion was made and they can report it. If nobody hits any of these pages, they only hit this page, then these pages of the code that's on these pages will not fire and only this one will. And so it's really important to be able to measure and track, uh, not really important, it is vitally, insanely, outrageously top important to know how to track these orders and these dollar values because the number one thing you need to know from Facebook is how much money did I put in and how much money did I get out? So what is the long-term value or the lifetime value of a customer? That's the whole point of upsells because if you send someone to one product and they go one pro buy one product for 50 bucks, that's fine. But if you send someone to a product for $50 and one for 397 then one for 97, your average cart value will hopefully be $85 or $75. And that's where you get to go to the calculators. And I just want to show them again, because this is, again, such a, another huge cheat opportunity. So here on my personal site, you can go to ROI. You want to use these calculators every place you can, if it's a quiz or whatever it is. So that way you know what's the cost per click, what's the opt-in, what's the sell rate, what's the order bump, and these numbers, you notice change every single time, these numbers down here. And so that's how you can really dial in your ads. And that's why I re-emphasized Measuring all of this stuff is, is my wife. Measuring this right here is insanely important because everyone needs to know how much can I spend on these ads? Am, am I able to spend $30 for a conversion? Beverly, what are their questions? Um, my other question was actually about getting that redirect pixel into ClickFunnels and you said it was in settings. Yeah, let me show you exactly. 
in my thing. Don't tell me, show me. I don't know. I think at this point, I just assume you have a video about everything. <laughs> I do. I, I definitely, I'm not, I, I can almost guarantee you I do. So let's just go into. So this will be my Instagram secret book. Let's see the igbook.com. I'm gonna go to, well, let me just kind of go to the settings first. This is going to be the body code, or I'm sorry, the head code is where you're going to have your general pixel. Head tracking code. And then you'll wanna to go to the individual components here. So you'll go into the funnel. Beverly, I'm gonna send you a video on this. Jeremy, can I just ask a question quickly? Of course. With, with the Facebook pixel, and then you know how you've got tracking also with Google, do you, can you put them all in the same place or is it best just to have one or you can use all and it doesn't muck it around? We do both. We do Facebook and Google. We track everything. Okay. So if you'll look at, like I went into settings, tracking codes, and in the head of the code for this specific page is my track is my Facebook pixel code down here. And if you'll notice the value of this is $7 and 95 cents because that's what we charge for shipping. And that's how they know to track that. Now, if we go out and go to another page, Same thing, tracking codes. And now this is the Facebook pixel that's very specific to what we're doing and what we're charging, showing that that's going to be a conversion. And that one there doesn't have a dollar amount on that one. Is that right? Well, this one will have the dollar amount on the thank you page. Okay. Let me go over to that. And I actually, I rebuilt a majority of this funnel last week and I'm still working on it. So down here will be the main conversion inside of here. And I don't see the dollar amount. I think we're tagging it a different way, but we get a little more sophisticated with our stuff than most people need to, just because I have a, a lot of additional stuff going on that I probably shouldn't, but we absolutely do. But you'll always wanna put that dollar amount that shows you exactly what it is. And also it, it can get confusing and you sometimes have to go to, it's called, C, are you guys familiar with CF Pro Tools? So there's a, to be able to track a lot of this stuff properly when they go to, like let's say that they buy the book and they buy the first upsell and go to the thank you page because they reject the downsell. Facebook doesn't know if they went to that confirmation page without taking the downsell, because regardless, if you go to my upsell and you go to my downsell, but you don't buy my downsell, you go to the confirmation page. If you do buy my downsell, you go to the confirmation page. Does that make sense? And so that's where the confusion can come in. And there's something called CF Pro Tools that is a piece of click funnels. It's, it's custom coding that we use, and that's why you're not seeing the dollar amount on those second ones but CF Pro Tools has specific code that you write on there that you, you copy and paste the code. There is like a subscription for it though. I think it's another hundred dollars a month, but it's vital to be able to track all this stuff. Let me re-explain that because I think this is a, a really important thing that took me a while to get my own mind around. So let's say that this is my book funnel and they come to this page and I'm gonna make it a little more simplistic and then they go to this page right here that is a $297 upsell. And then let's say that they do not buy my 297 upsell. 
but we do three payments of 97 for a different product and a down sell. And then here's the thank you page, the confirmation page. When you're putting, you have your general pixel on everything. You put it one time and it goes to everything. You have a snippet of code right here from Facebook that um, is specific for this page. You have a snippet of code that's specific for this page and you have a snippet of code specific for this page. The only way Facebook knows is if they hit a page that code fires to their computer or their phone or whatever device they're on. So let's say someone comes to this page and doesn't buy the 297 and they come to this page and they don't buy the 297 or I'm sorry, the three payments of 97, they're still going to end up at this page right here, no matter what. And so if Facebook is firing these snippets of code when they hit these pages, that's the only way they know that a conversion was made. But they could have went from this page, declined all my upsells, and still made it to this page, but yet the code still fired every time because they still saw the pages and saw the offers. That's why there's something called CF Pro Tools that Jamie Smith, Jamie Smith works with four click funnels at this point, but he puts spe specific codes that help this stuff fire perfectly because it's all about what page they hit. And this almost goes down again. This is kind of complex stuff. Now when we're getting into Facebook tracking and retargeting and, and ad management. Oh, let me go to the retargeting part real quick. So what the retargeting says is if someone hits this page right here and they don't buy these offers, we can run specific ads to people that says, hey, they saw this page and they didn't buy these offers, so we want to retarget them with other ads for 30 days, for three weeks, for 30 years, or whatever it is you want to put into the ads manager, and we want to offer them a discount code or more bonuses or more incentives, or we don't want to offer them anything, we just want to retarget them because now they know us and understand us a little bit better. We could, I mean, I certainly could do a whole class on Facebook ads and I keep preference and I'm not a Facebook ads expert. We have people that run our Facebook ads, but I'm very good at going in and understanding. And that's how all you guys should be. You should be very good at understanding how all of this stuff works. You shouldn't just turn stuff over to other people. Yes. Well, thank you very much. I think that's my most pressing thing going into this next week is trying to figure that out. So. Okay, I'm gonna make a note right now. Actually, I'm not even gonna do that. Let's do it even faster. Can you please find those few videos that I shot about Facebook ads, pixel and retargeting and send them to me or show me where they are in my membership area? I can almost guarantee you I'll have the links in the next 10 minutes. Nice. And it's real simple how I break it down and show it. All right, guys, what else do y'all have? Um, I've got a couple of questions, if that's okay, Jeremy. I guess Mel, probably one of my favorite people ever. <laughs> um, do, with, it's, uh, Beverly touched on it as well. Sometimes uh, people's websites are all slow and obviously imaging images probably um, are a part of that. What do you use to um, compress your, your images for the website to speed it up? Let me tell you how I know you're smart because now you're asking more complex and sophisticated questions that this is where the experts go to. I mean, building the funnels, that's cute. Everyone has these templates, but dialing down load speeds. Now that's where the rubber meets the road. And now you're talking my language because I get crazy over this stuff. I need all of it to be perfect. So let me show you a couple things and even something inside of click funnels that I noticed Okay, guys, I'm going to admit something to you. I've been bored out of my freaking mind a little bit too. So even though this isn't a whole lot different from me, I mean, I, I pretty much just work all the time anyway, but I'm, I'm trying to find something that I found just a couple days. Oh, here it is. Okay. So I'm going to show you a couple different things that's going to address specifically that, which is an excellent question. I'm in the back end of my ClickFunnels. And when you log in, just go to the upper right and go to account settings. Can you see that okay, Mel? Uh, yes, yep. 
there's something brand new that I found two days ago, just because I'm like, I might as well look at everything ClickFunnels has. See available beta features, expand. Can use image lazy load and can use um, something with JavaScript. It's a, both these are supposed to make your pages load faster. I haven't noticed anything. I haven't tested it that well yet, but I just noticed these things a couple days ago because I have nothing better to do than to look at my ClickFunnels dashboard. Now, there's something else I wanna show you too. There's a website called Tiny PNG that I use for everything. This is outrageously important. And let me do a, like a, a, a demo because I want you guys to say, Jeremy, I think you're full of it, show me. And Barry, I'm gonna grab the, the link that you sent me and try to do the demo with that. So here we go. So here's a page that Barry just sent me and we'll look at this and we'll kind of go into this in a moment. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this book, take this image, I'm sorry, save the image, um, save. It should drop it over on my desktop, which it did. Let me share my whole screen so you don't think I'm pulling the wool over your eyes, which I probably am. Okay, so I'm gonna grab, is it sharing my whole screen? Yes, we can see it. Oh, I can. I'm grabbing this image right here, and I'm going to go over to tinypng.com. I'm going to drop it in there, and I'm going to watch it do its magic. Okay. It just, so literally, it just saved 64%. It took from 1.2 megabytes all the way down to 433 megabytes. All I have to do is click that to download it. Double click over here. And then use the exact same image that has the exact same quality. Nothing changed about this image other than I just compressed the hell out of the file. And so one of the things, I think I'm getting messages for those videos now, Beverly. Bam, there they are. Gosh, you are so good. Perfect, let me respond. Okay, I'll, po I'll post the links. So, so good. I cannot tell you how great of people I have working with me. They are insanely smart and talented and educated and better patients than me. Okay, so those two components right there, Mel, and you might have to pay for tiny PNG if the images get too large, but I think the paid, I have the paid plan. I think it's like a one-time charge of 30 bucks or, or something very insignificant. It's, it's, it's hardly anything. But Mel, that's a, that's a very good question because load speed is insanely important. Are you using the, the Google tests for the load speeds? Oh, I haven't yet. No. And uh, that's what I was going to ask you. What's the best thing to like, how do you test, test it? Cause obviously, and it, I've noticed too, by putting on a little bit more of the CSS into click funnels, it does slow it down. Mm -hmm. So CSS is just custom code to make things look prettier sometimes. And we use a lot of it too. What I like to do is go to Google speedtest.com. I almost thought about building this myself. Oh, that's not where I want to go. Page speed. And I'll put these links down here. So we can go to pretty much um, make your, your page load faster. Let's just go to what is at the top of my mind right now. The masterclass.com, some stuff we're doing with them. I can take their URL, copy it paste it right here and I can analyze what their page speed is. This is another great way to get customers. Go take their URLs, put it in the Google page speed and then have it spit out, have it spit out, you know, how quickly their page is loading. And most of the time it's almost always images. There's another really great one. Uh, see, this is horrendous. Oh, wow. 
This is super, super, super slow where all this stuff comes into place. And you have the so moment. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mel, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry, I was just gonna ask, well, how, how can you tell from this information that it would be the images or is there any way to tell or? Breaking it down right here. Yep, okay, cool. So all of this, all of this information is breaking down what the problems are. You can go to desktop, what should be faster, and you go to mobile. Let me show you something else that's really awesome why I'm kind of on this topic. Um, broken link tester. I'm close to just building this myself. Find broken links on any website. Oh, these stupid codes. WFG8S. And all I have to do is click a button. Well, I don't have time to, oh my goodness. Six K M Y Niner. If I don't get it right that time, we're just gonna, okay. I'm not gonna keep doing this, but it, there's websites out there for, and I use this one several times. You can put anyone's website in this broken link checker. You click a button, it takes like three minutes and it crawls their entire website and spits out like 30 broken links. So you could go to the company and say, hey, I was, going, I was doing a quick evaluation on your website. Notice you had 30 broken links. I know that's bringing the page load speed down. I know that's probably you know, hurting your rankings. So here's the information. And then what do you think they're gonna do? Can you fix it? Yeah, of course I can fix it. Um, also, while we're on that too, with, what, how, what's the best thing to use to, to see where you can rank, where your page ranks? Because what, what's... Here's what I use. Uber suggest, this is Neil's free tool. You can come over here and type in pretty much any website you want or anybody that you want to search. You can search keywords to figure out where you're ranking. You can search websites to figure out, holy shit, what did he do? This is one of the guys that's kind of a competitor a little bit that I focus on and I do not know what this big jump is, but that goes back again. Whatever the hell he did, they're gonna show me what he did. They're gonna show me the keywords. They're gonna show me you know, what specifically he begun to target to just grow like crazy. And I need to figure that out. It's all about you know, spying on your competitors and reverse engineering all their processes. But Uber suggests, through all you go to Neil's, Neil Patel's website. And then at the bottom, there's something called tools. Uber suggest. Awesome. And one of my top bars on, on my computer because I use it so frequently. Again, I mean, all of this skill set that we have with the, even what you've learned here, the, the Facebook pixels, the, the funnels, the, the speed tests, this is the stuff that people are salivating for to whereas we were the biggest dorks in the room six months ago. Now who's laughing? Okay. <laughs> um, I have um, two more questions if that's all right. Um, with yes. with yeah. Google My Business, um, I was sort of looking through all the stuff but I couldn't find what you use to um, get the backlinks on the videos to help rank them higher on the... Um, it was some, yeah, I, I couldn't remember what it was or I couldn't find it. So that's a little bit of a strategy that sometimes we recommend and sometimes we don't. I can go find Mel for you, the company that we've used. What okay. you're doing is you're paying a company to backlink that specific video and put it out into the internet world. So it sends a signal back to Google that, hey, all these companies are linking to us. This must be great content. So I, I can absolutely, let me kind of dig around right now and see if I can find that company. It's really inexpensive too. Yeah, I was actually curious about the Google My Business as well because I wasn't sure, I hadn't seen any of your videos on it. I wasn't sure which membership section it would be in. If you had well, any. I, haven't, I haven't released that section of the Google My Business videos yet. And some of it is I'm a little pissed off about Google My Business. And part of it is they stopped allowing reviews since this coronavirus took place. I don't know what's, I've had over a dozen reviews in over a month ago. Let me look at 
you to, yeah, I, it's, I'm going to have to find that company that we were buying the backlinks from and send them to you. I don't want to waste the time on here. But the problem with the Google My Business right now is they're at Skeleton Cruise in, at Google and they're taking forever to get a lot of stuff done. And they're also not approving reviews, whether they're good or bad. They're not allowing any reviews. And I, I also want to kind of, I'm confused. So I want to unconfuse anybody when it comes to Google My Business and backlinks for YouTube, that's completely separate. So Google My Business is the three pack that's going to have the reviews, going to have your business hours, going to have posts, going to have people that, that can follow you. The YouTube rankings, that's entirely different, but you can absolutely rank on, on Google with your YouTube videos when you structure them the right way. Awesome. Um, cool. Cause yeah, that was so one of another, I've got this dating or he, he does dating online and he's got, um, he does photography for people. So they've got better online pictures. Um, so I was looking at trying to fix his or get a better Google my business, um, profile for him. So let me show you something funny right now. <laughs> so my trainer that I box with, I've been trying to help him out a little bit and showing him some SEO stuff. This is him and see how he has the hyphens on everything, but he's ranking everywhere for all these different videos right away. But is it not, because of the hyphens or? No, you're not supposed to put the damn hyphens up there as I've told Tony, that's not where they go. What's up everybody, it's your boy, Tony Denarano. Excellent boxing trainer. So <laughs> you're not supposed, to, you put these hyphens in the, um, when you upload the video. So if I go take his video right now, which don't look at all my black hat stuff that we can steal. Let me go back over to share my whole screen. Damn it. If I go over to down here, that's all I want. The videos, the video he coded perfectly. And so that's what's supposed to be coded. The, the core workout, this is what should have the hyphens in it, the actual video file. You shouldn't put the hyphens up here. You just put the regular name of what you're doing. So just a little bit of, of stuff, but he's already, he just did this April 7th and today is April 14th, a week ago. And he's already, he's already blowing up rankings everywhere. So obviously it works and he's a very good person. And I mean, as much as I want to be somewhat pompous, which is the wrong attitude, I don't mean to come off that way whatsoever, but a lot of people are struggling. A lot of good hearted, um, good people, that have worked really hard and have families to support and take care of, they're struggling. They don't, there's no money. Their clients, they can't train their clients in America. It's against the law. You can't do it. And I mean, they're struggling. So they're doing everything they can to try to make it work and earn an income. And as I've said, and as I've learned, when you have a product or a service that will help other people, it's your job, your duty, your obligation to sell it to people and get it in their hands. I've said a lot of times on these videos or live calls, business owners want to have a little bit of success and go buy a new Range Rover or a Country Club mem membership. They don't want to invest in their Google My Business listings and really get that foundation stupid solid. So, I mean, now, now is an important time to convince people you need to get your foundation on the internet solid. Um, and because Google aren't doing the reviews and they're being slow and all that sort of stuff, it's, it's probably even better time to get it all the foundation properly. And then when it does start to kick back in and then hopefully, obviously they've got some more people on the ground and it, you're, if you've got it, let's say, so say if they've got say 15 reviews in the waiting and then they release all those views at, reviews at once, well, that, that'll obviously help with the whole thing, won't it? Well, any review at all on Google, well, positive. Any positive review at all on Google will help. I can't tell you how many seasoned businesses, 10, 15 years, have four Google reviews. And I get the reports for our own Google stuff. 
you get a ton of traffic on your Google My Business review. I mean, I've said a few times, that's a job in and of itself that a person could make a, a, a six-figure living just setting up the Google My Business for companies. And the beautiful and we, thing is you don't have to think too hard and create. You just follow a formula. And are you going to be doing a, a training on that, Jeremy? Or? Yes. I would like to know where to find that formula. Just saying. Okay. I will absolutely send it to you. I, I don't have the formula on the Google My Business down perfect yet, but I 1,000% have the formula down for YouTube ranking. Awesome. That would be great because a lot of my, all of my people do YouTube. Okay, let me go. I think that I, I have all these links. Pixels, pixels, pixels. Okay, yeah, bidding. Okay, she sent me all these links that you guys were requesting for Facebook training that I did. I'm gonna put them in the chat now. That's just exactly what she sent me. So, oh gosh, pretty easy. Okay, so there's all the links right there. There's three different videos it looks like I've done on Facebook, pixels and retargeting and the bidding and the ads. And if there's any more that you need, we run so many Facebook ads, they can just record their screen while they're, they're doing the ads anyhow. So just let me know what else you guys want for Facebook ads, YouTube ads, all ads. Been, we put more on ads than most people would probably not sleep at night if they put as much money on ads. But again, if you have a product or a service or a business that you think will help people, it's your job to shout from the top of the roof what you've got. What else? Anything else, Mel? I uh, guess I got lucky last. Um, I've got this PT dude in America, actually. And actually, and I've got another dude in the UK. Um, but one of them wants to do like a 21 day challenge. And I know you did a challenge, but I remember you saying that if you did it again, you'd definitely do it a little bit different. Um, and obviously I've seen Russell Brunson's 30 day challenge and how he sort of set it up with the email first and sends them to, to a place. Have you got any tips for me that how I should set it up or? Absolutely. The biggest mistake with these challenges is 30 days, 21 days. It's too long. We can't, I mean, even during a pandemic to where the police are putting paddle locks on the outside of your door and not letting you leave your house. Okay, so people that watch this later on, that's not actually happening. <laughs> um, I think that it needs to be seven to 10 days and it needs to be the meat, not the milk of content. And the most important thing to any challenge, bar none, is getting people results as soon as possible and getting a, a, a small result. One of the things that I learned with my training courses was instead of doing a, a huge training course that has all this information in there, which obviously you guys know that I still do, the first three videos, I need to get you a win, which means I need to get you to go set something up or go build something or go do something to where you'll get a shot of dopamine in your brain and say, I actually achieved something, I actually accomplished something. And so when you're looking at these challenges, seven to 10 days max don't go over we'll say 11 days since odd numbers sell better don't go over 11 days and really have the meat of the stuff crammed in as much as possible that what we do on ours is we have homework if you've noticed how we do it we have you reply to a specific email with your homework assignments and i'm actually working on something else that's going to have like a little checkbox click box click funnels has to where you'll have to click the checkbox and it will actually start tallying, tallying something up that you completed specific tasks. I don't know how I'm gonna pull that off yet, but I just started work on that a couple of days ago. Cool, awesome. Um, what, one more what, thing on the challenge as well. You wanna infuse, if possible, or once you get them, client success stories of people who went through the challenge and had, had success. So not only are you giving them the homework with the challenge of the small tasks that are very small that they have to, you know, complete, but you're giving success stories of someone that was similar to them that's having success with, with what they learned throughout the challenge. Cool. And then obviously from that challenge, lead them into some other product or service that this guy has. Um, and should I, because I was thinking, and should I include, say, um, if they want, to keep the videos from the challenge, like I can include that 
as in the offer. So it sort of makes the offer more, um, uh, sorry, words, um, yeah, more enticing. Um, but if I do the challenge, should I not worry about giving them access to the videos ever again? Because it just goes for that or do you know what I'm saying? I think that that would be a, it's something that I've done in the past. I don't know where I got it from. I'm sure I did somewhere. I it, almost always pay for that upgrade. Yeah. <laughs> yeah oh no, oh, Cause I just, just saying. <laughs> most, most people do. That's one of my high, that's like 55 to 60% of people take it. So if we go through a training and it's like a, a live training like this, I'll do order bumps sometimes that will say, get the recordings after we're done so we can, you can watch them unlimited time. And it, it depends on what, a, what price point I'll go with that. But that's one thing that we've used and had success with. Yeah, cool. Awesome. Jeremy, you need to create a, create your seven day challenge, seven day challenge course. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, we are so backed up with client work that we took on when I was trying to build this course out of Upwork. And I've, I've met some really great people that have good products and they've worked with all these other gurus that don't have a clue what they're doing and seeing their passion and one gentleman holding his newborn baby in his hand saying, you know, I've sacrificed so much money with other morons telling me that they could build what I want. And all it is is money out the door and nothing coming in and my family is sacrificed. And so <laughs> here's something funny. Gosh, I feel like you guys are a closer group so I can tell you this. My son's mother and I separated a while back ago and it was not pretty. I don't think it's pretty anytime. But one of the things I've always wanted from her was her unadulterated, direct, honest feedback of what I was like when she met me coming off of a massive failure with nothing and how I've built the empire that I have now because she was able to see my mindset, my actions, my activities, how it went. She was able to see the whole thing from, I mean, I literally had nothing seven years ago and now I, I'm running the, one of the top in an industry. And so she did an hour long interview with me earlier this week or earlier last week and revealed as much as she could have of what my mindset and what my behavior was like going from nothing to where I am now. So what me, a gift. That's like a super big gift. Let me give you that link too. I can't believe she did that. And it's, it's pretty brutal and real and raw, but that's what I want people to know. Everyone thinks, Oh, Jeremy's the best selling author. Oh, Jeremy's the, the, um, two comma club winner, Jeremy's best. I mean, it's, that's cute and that's, things work okay. Now here's the link. Please don't share this link guys. So that's a pretty good one. It's a bonus I'm using for some other stuff, but just understanding that this stuff isn't easy and acquiring these skills isn't easy, but it pays. You know, one of the things I love, I think Tom Billiard says this, he says that money spends once but knowledge spins infinitely. I love that. It made it in my book. So what else guys? Barry, you may, let me look at this page, Barry. I'm sorry. Mel, did I answer your, your question? Yeah. Thank you so much, Jeremy. That's awesome. Um, yes. Yeah, so cool. And thank you so much for getting me onto Upwork. Like it's just been rocking. I've actually got that much work at the moment that I'm sort of, I'm like, I don't want to take on any more work. Cause I feel like I'm like, it's kind of drowning and stuff. I've got people from all over the world, like go do this, do this, do this. And I'm sort of, I'm going, ah, but it's good. It's wild. So thank you so much for that. But nothing could make me happier than hear you say that again, this is a time where we are at economic lows to where people the, in the United States, the government has to give people money so they can eat. They have to, the government's sending a lot of people thousand dollar checks. I don't think most, most of us don't get them, but the government's sending the, people money because they can't eat. And now here you are saying that I have all the business. I can't even take any more people. That's the beauty of this whole thing. And that drives down the point. This shit works, but Mel, here's why it works. And I won't keep going on all of this stuff. It works because you sat there and you learned like crazy how to build these funnels and build this stuff out. And because you learned how to do it, it goes to my book where I talk about the confidence competence loop. The more confidence you have in what you can do, the more confidence you have in actually doing it. And it's a vicious cycle. 
So some of these massive supplement companies or software companies that are coming to me right now, there's no doubt in my mind, I'm, I'm one of the best in the world at this stuff. And I, I feel completely happy charging what I do and saying, yeah, the buck stops with me. If I can't do it, it, it can't be done. But that's the confidence, confidence loop. And because Mel, you put all of that insane amount of time in learning this stuff, now you can confidently tell your customers, yeah, I can do that and actually deliver on your promises. So I love that. Very Funny good. story about your book. I, you know, my son's been reading it since we've been homeschooling. I'm so bad at homeschooling. It's ridiculous. <laughs> but anyway, so he's reading your book. He just got his first online gig. No lie. That's so cool. <laughs> It's so funny. So now he's sitting in bed with his little, I got him a MacBook. He didn't have one before. He's only 12, you know? And so he, he does the same thing. He'll sit propped up in bed in that same spot where he reads the book and he's like on there trying to learn how to do stuff. It's, it's ridiculous. It's insane. That's definitely using the downtime as prime time. Barry, I'm going to go to the steel. Sorry. It took me so long. Hopefully I had some good stuff to say. Hopefully, hopefully. This interview, I would like you guys' feedback. I haven't shared this with the, we just did it, but the interview with my ex and I, that's some crazy shit. Only I would do some, something like yeah, that. Yeah, I'm nervous on your behalf. I'm like, I don't know if I, if I would ever have the guts to do that. Like, you have to get real humble about yourself real fast. <laughs> I told her, I'm like, I want the truth. I want my people to have the truth. I want them to know what it really takes. Okay, Barry. Looking at this, looking, looking, looking. Let me just show everybody this simple trick or component. So I stop sharing. Sorry, Barry. I want to show you guys this. Any, any web page you go to anywhere in the world, if you're using a Mac, which everyone should, if you put two fingers on the screen and you go to inspect, you can immediately get to what the mobile version looks like. If you want to come over here, there's the tablet version. But it's really important to look at mobile versions and see how this stuff breaks down. Okay. Lots of things that... Why do I keep stopping the sharing? Sorry guys, this is going back and forth. I mean, Barry, I'm not a big fan of it. I think that it just looks so quickly thrown together that I don't think you're gonna get a lot of, I mean, maybe it's working. Are you getting traffic there right now? I just did it. Yeah, I, I would make it a little more aesthetically pleasing I certainly wouldn't have 2014 down there when we're in 2020, or they might think this is old information. Um, let's look at what happens next. Um, I don't know that I would ask for full name. I might just do the first name. Okay. Yeah, I can say I used to ask for full name, but by asking for just first name when you're sending the follow-up emails and it says just their first name, they get a lot more interaction than full name emails. You can't start a video off like this. I haven't, I haven't updated this. Yeah, this okay, is that looks like you're about to scold me. <laughs> um, your brand audit and then the, there's, this will be too confusing for people, both of these buttons. It has to be one thing and one thing only. Okay. Um, yeah, this obviously needs to be updated. Right, I have an update. I'm, I'm in the middle of writing the report. Okay, just to... I only have two reasons done. I gotta do, I'm writing three more reasons. Okay, I'm just gonna rebuild this page for you and send it to you. Fair Maybe enough. I can, I can do it right now in front of you if you'd like me to do that, or I can just do it and then send it to you. You tell me what you want. You want to do it in, you want to go inside of ClickFunnels? Well, I'm going to go inside, I was going to go inside my own ClickFunnels and just rebuild it because I don't like it. All right. And then you what do I do with this one? I can just, then I can just delete this one? You, well, I'm going to build it in mine and then I'm going to give you the shared funnel link and you're going to drop it in yours. Why don't right. we do this? Well, I can. I'm over my, 
I don't think you can send any more to me. I'm, I'm like at 22 out of 20 funnels inside of there. I'd have to delete something. So delete some of the ones that aren't working. All right. Yeah, do that. Let me do this. I'm going to build this funnel in front of you guys just because some people might think I have Kibo or Elves do this for me and I don't sit here and build these damn things in my sleep. But if y'all you want to keep the realm. But if y'all want to jump off because I know that y'all have a lot of work to do, that's fine. But I'll probably it won't take me more than 10 minutes to build this funnel. So I'm gonna go over to my ClickFunnels account. I'm going to build a new funnel. Okay, let me share my screen. And you can see that we, oh, they must have stopped at 250. So add funnel. I'm just gonna make this the classic, super simple, collect emails. I'm gonna call this Barry. Can y'all see my screen okay? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Let's build this thing. While that's doing whatever it does to get my funnel in place, I'm gonna start taking your images. I'm very proud of the fact that I made that book cover myself. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> that's okay. That's a start. For, for, okay, for the first time, you got to say, come on. Well, now it's not giving me that image. Shoot. I might need you to, well, I might just do this for time's sake. Oh no, I still have the image right here. Perfect. Generally on every single sales funnel, every single image, I'm gonna go drop in tinypng.com. Well, you just did it with that one, so it should be all done. With that one, exactly, and then this one as well. Notice how it saved us 39%, so it's just really, really helping us when it comes down to the size let me do this differently. When it comes to the size of these images that I can save. I lost you again. Hang you can't on. see my computer? Hang on. Let me stop and start again. Yeah, there you are. Okay. Oh, Where was your page? Okay, so here's the funnel that we're gonna build. I'm really just trying to get a blank page that I can get rid of everything very quickly. Delete, delete, delete. Where's your page? So we're going to start with an image at the top. And I'm going to do one column. And I'm actually going to change this to not full page. I'm just going to make it wide. So it's going to bring it in a little bit more. So we're going to do image. Where is that? There's the image. I'm going to upload that image. Double click it. So there's the image. Obviously, oh my God, Jeremy, that's not how you build the image. That's right. So I'm going to come over here to the size. And that's probably, and I do 333 because that's where my finger is touched. Instead of doing 350, it's about, a lot of this is about speed as well. Um, I want it higher up here. So I have my adjustments. If you've noticed me build any funnels, you know I'm insane on the spacing. So I'm going to go all the way up there. And I'm probably going to go bring it up a little bit more. Yeah, I want it at the very top. I think that looks fine. Uh, the little bit of spacing is good. I'm going to save because I do that just regularly. I'm going to grab this text, copy it, and I'm going to come down and I'm going to add the headline. 
any one product. Let's see, what do I not like about just the way everything looks on here? One of the things that I like to do to move in and out of text is I'll go to this piece right here, the settings, and the bottom to left to right. See how I can bring that text in a little bit more? And yeah. if I get advanced, I can do it even more. It really depends on how much you want to align it. Uh, I'm not a big fan of that font. Let's just go with one of the most sim simple fonts, which is Roberto. It looks like the colors you have are red and black. So we'll do bold red. We'll do not bold black. What's the word for not bold? Not bold, Jeremy. So there's that there. So we're going to do two columns here for this. And also, this isn't how I teach this. I teach this to have the, the radio buttons that says, how did you hear about this? Facebook, Auto Trader, Auto Trend. It's very important to have that qualifier. See how you have the, the image kind of sprawled out right here? We went ahead. Yeah. It's nice and clean. We're okay. going to bring the, the text up closer to this. Again, if I were building this, I would put the, the book right here and then below you, it. You are building this. Well, I'm gonna, I want to do it exactly the way you have it now for sake of demonstration. Okay. So we have the book on the left. I mean, you, you don't have to. If you build it the way you want to and I can see it, then I can learn how to build the way you do. Well, I'm, I'm going to show you and then... I have an insane amount of videos that shows you the other way as well. <laughs> because again, I can do it for you, but out of all the trainings that you have of mine and out of all the stuff I have on my website, I think that you can step this up. So anyhow, what's happening here? Book's too big, Jeremy. So let's say 444, too big, 222, two, two, maybe 33. Three. That still looks kind of big. I'll just do 300 for that. Um, Jerry, could I just ask a quick question? You know, with the um, image. Uh, yes, Mel. Go ahead, Mel. <laughs> yeah, cool. Um, with the image, sometimes I've been having troubles with um, trying to make the image move horizontally. Like sometimes it's there, um, but it's not centered. Like it's centered, but I don't know. Sometimes I, I want to move it like. Um, say left or right a little bit and obviously there's centered left right but it still has too much gap and things like that in it I was I'm sort you of a bit to, you're gonna have to, you'll have to manipulate it and this is kind of where the fine tuning I can put this image anywhere I want I don't care what it is uh, there's nothing I can't do with this image right here and just for some more demonstrations we can go to four if I want to have it set, in this section right here, I can set it in that section. It just, it's completely wherever I want to set this book. You'll have to, you know, work with the parameters that you have here. You can come into the settings that's right there. You can also come into the settings that I showed you that's down here for advanced. And then you can come into more settings up here that's moving stuff around. But you literally can, you can place pretty much any image, any place, anywhere that you want. It's just how creative are you going to come into using all the parameters that they give you. Yeah, Did cool. That's awesome. Thank you. So that it, you just have to play around with it, but you can literally get this stuff any how you want. And if it won't do what you want, and there's still some more that needs to be changed, what you'll do is you'll go to canva.com and you'll get a white background and you'll maneuver the book with the white background behind it that fills that space however you want it to fill. And you'll come in here and you'll drop it in as an image to make it lay perfectly. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, it really, the art and science of patience and playing around with it and just getting it precisely how you want it is how you really master this stuff.
and maybe I wanted to show off or maybe I wanted to prove to you. I, I do this stuff just as much as anybody else in the world out there. Uh, a mistake people make when it goes to image width and height, you can't do both. You can only do one. Because if I do something there and then I do something here, I'm going to make it look discombobulated or bad. So just do one or the other and get it to lay in there the right way. Okay, now the next thing is the, the text. And in the new course I'm putting together, there is a decent amount of custom coding that we're using in our stuff. And all of those custom codes are in there along with how to use them. Because just little things that we don't think about that is mandatory, like having this video autoplay right here, that's all special code. This is all special stuff that, that we have here that's really important. And the round edges? <laughs> the, so the round edges are a new thing to me. I hate square anything in life. The round edges are another specific code that we use on every video just because it, edges are sharp and ugly. I don't, I just, I hate edges. So that's, that is a specific code and it's CSS exactly. So here we go. What else? And now we have this button. That is a really ugly button, Barry. That's part of the reason why I had to redo this. We'll drop the button down here. Let's talk about the button. The button's, the button's insanely important. And the reason why the button's insanely important, because that's what I want people to do. I need them to click that button. Enter name and email address, get access. Yeah, that's, we're not gonna use that. Um, we're gonna say click almost always. And we're going to say, I like instant access because people want, how can I get it right away? And now I'm going to fix the, fix well, the space. Did you mean to just to duplicate what was up above in the text? What's up? Did you mean to duplicate just what was up above in the text? No, I didn't. I think that my copy and paste didn't copy and paste. Sorry. Right. No worries. Just wanted to let you know I was paying attention. Yeah, I like that. So what do we have? So the free reports, what you want bold. Okay. Again, back to my edges, every side I have, I go to corners, 15%. I want it rounded. I don't want to, I want a hard shadow behind it. I don't want a border at all. So I'm going to go to none. And then I want, I think I'm just going to use an arrow. And Mel, you're the only person who will probably understand this. This arrow goes awry all the damn time with glitches. And so sometimes I've got to go back in there, even though you see it, and click the exact same thing again. We've got a list of glitches we sent Russell and Todd that hopefully they'll get on when they're done with their new launch. But let's look at this. And we're actually, we're gonna change this up for mobile a little bit as well. Um, click to get instant access. I want the button a little bit thicker. This doesn't look right. This is how you'll see how crazy I am with that stuff. Okay, now it looks a little bit better to me. Um, I think just for, to get this to convert better, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put some subtext down there. I'm gonna make the subtext a little bit larger. Okay. I think that looks okay now. What about the color of the button? I'm okay with the blue right now. I think that okay. that works. The, but the color that we use, that we've been using a lot, there's something called colorzillow.com. You can go there and you can get colors from, pick colors from people's pages. So if I hover that over here, it's going to give me that color code. This orange color code right here has been working really well. 
So I'll take that code. We want to go ahead and make it that orange. And I'll put that code down here. Oh, yeah, I like that. So we can go with that. That's what we use pretty frequently. One of the things that when it comes to design work, you want to do is you'll look at the cover. You, you don't want a whole lot of colors. And that's something that drives me nuts. So now we have this color, like a, a, a solid, a different blue, a red or a whatever that color is. We have this color, we have black. So now we have orange, we have this red, we have this black. Now we have this color and this color. It's just, that makes it hard for, for the mind to really be able to digest. I got you. There's just too many colors. If you look at a lot of stuff that I do out there, I try to keep it really simple, but really aesthetically um, pleasing. So what else do we have? This free report will be emailed to the address. Um, I'll use that, but differently. So I'm going to take that. I copy this stuff just to move fast. And this is the way I actually build these things. I want this text smaller, much, much, much smaller. I want more space. And what else do I want? That works. I want an icon. I want a space. Barry, are you convinced now that I actually do this all the time? I have never had a doubt. <laughs> I certainly build these funnels. I don't know what led you to think that I had any doubts. No, I just, I enjoy doing this stuff. And I think it's- I enjoy watching it. <laughs> I think it's important that people, so what I would do is, yeah, I guess we can use this. We'll just update it. So I'm gonna need to go put another column. I'm gonna double this just so I can take it real fast. I'm gonna put that right there. Obviously a lot larger than we want it. We're gonna update it to reflect the year that we're currently in. Maybe move it down a little bit. You know, having terms of service on your websites, so just something simple and having terms privacy policy and contact helps them convert because people see it as legit and one of the things with contact all you really have to do is there's something called m e l t o colon email address and it'll just send an email to wherever you wanted to send an email to I use four, four spaces is my mat. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's my number for everything. Okay, so as you can see, and I'm gonna build the other page too. As you can see, we pretty much just did the same, the same page, just changed it up a little bit for aesthetics and and mainly converting. I actually think I want this text larger. Doggone it. I closed the page out accidentally. I want to show you something important here because I'm going to show you how I'm going to do this for mobile because I'm going to do it differently. Okay, I think I have it back up. Yeah, I didn't like, the more I looked at this, I, I didn't like this text. I don't like the size of it. 
And I don't like that because I have the parameters in too much. I want that to go ahead and come out. Okay, that's better. Good, good, good. Okay. Okay, and then something important to do, we're gonna set this to open the pop-up. And then we're also going to make certain that we put this right here, this book, to open the pop-up. Oh yeah, good idea. Now we're gonna to go to the pop-up, show pop-up. We're gonna make the pop-up small, advanced, corners, 25, me and my corners. Small, we'll have it appear when people exit. You're a smooth operator, Jeremy. Yeah, I do this stuff in my sleep, I think sometimes. <laughs> so go back to the pop-up. I think I'm gonna put the one. the obviously the spacing is hideous edit settings so let's look at this real quick so show this is pop-ups this is showing me the pop-up down here is my settings of my pop-up so i'm going to get this text up closer up there usually i put this at 20 usually i have this at 20 as well for right to left and i still want this higher so i have to go to this so much spacing that probably only Mel appreciates. Um, I'm gonna drop the book in here again, just much smaller. So this one might be still too big. I think that's going to be the size I want. Looks good. We're going to need the input fields. So input, I'm gonna do my first one. I'm gonna go over to advanced. I'm gonna go back to my little corners again. I'm going to set as first name. I'm gonna say enter your, don't want that. I'm going to make it required. My font, I'm going to keep it all the same. I'm going to make it 18 and 16 is the way I do it. And I'm going to move it up to 20. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to duplicate this because I already have most of it the way that I want it. I'm going to change this to email address. Enter your Anything else is good. Email required already 18. This should be 16. Why did that change? Did it change over here? Yes, I want that 16. Looks good. Now I'm gonna to need to do a button so they can submit it. I wanna make sure I use the same color on my buttons, always. Copy. Save again, just in case something crashes. Back over here to corners, no border, corners 15, shadow hard. My little arrow that I typically use for everything that we found converts the best, pointing towards the call to action. And I've been saying here a lot, click to complete. I think I wanted this a little bit thicker as well. That's not what I wanted. 15 and the color. Something else I've been adding down at the bottom of these things is so 
advanced. This is being recorded, so you can absolutely um, go back and watch this replay since I'm trying to move pretty quickly here. I think I want that smaller. Car lovers? Well, what is the report? For car dealers. DEAO dealers. There you go. Okay, let's see what we have. Click the book. There's my pop-up, 100% free report. It's already pulling my information, first name and email. See Mel, what I'm talking about, it changes my damn things. I hate when it changes my shit. Don't change my <laughs> I hate that. So I'm gonna go back with my little temper tantrum and the thing again to how I want my buttons to be. But you know what, that's part of what makes me fairly successful is getting this small stuff the way I want it. I know what converts and I know what doesn't convert. I guess I forgot to click. Also that font's different. So we're gonna fix that. We're gonna submit the order and the font that we're using is Roberto. What the heck? Guys, you're kind of seeing in real time the glitches of things changing up. And it's, it's easy to get frustrated with some of the glitches maybe, or it's easier just to go fix them. So this doesn't look good with the size of the fonts. And I didn't change that. See how I have a different font here? Because I didn't do global fonts, if I do topographic. The global font should be that, should be that. And we're using black. So now it has my fonts. And you usually can use maybe two, no more than three fonts on a page. Do not use more than three fonts or you are fired. Click to complete, simple, simple, simple. You can't fire me. Uh, I might figure out how. <laughs> okay, here we go. Bam, that's what I want. This is a beautiful, simple, the only thing I would change, how we're still going. Go to SEO data, 100%. Let's drop that there. And then what was the other thing that I saw for a second that I was gonna fix? Was it on the pop-up? I think I might be able to make this a little bit larger. Oh, here's what I was gonna do, it was on the pop-up. I wanna edit the settings. I wanna black this out a little bit more. Not a whole lot, but I do want that, that dark. I want this to really shine. Yeah, that's good. And I also want the pop-up higher on the page because I know on mobile it makes a big difference. Right. Which we haven't gotten to yet. Preview. So here's kind of where you were. And here's where we moved to just a... a I think if people go to a page like that, they'll see the cleanness of it and it will make them a better likely to trust what it is that you have. 100% agree. This is too big still. So let's adjust that slightly. I think that looks better. Okay, now let's see what this is gonna look like on mobile. Not too good. Jeremy, you suck. So let's go ahead and start fixing some of this. I want to double this image. I want to put this desktop only. I want to click this and I want to go mobile only. And on the mobile only, I want to move this to probably 250. Okay, that's better. 
So that part's fixed, top down. Yeah, that was the problem I was, in, was trying to get it. So now we're gonna- I don't know how to- Well, you can never say again, I don't know how after I just built this. So I think <laughs> larger and it's recorded. Okay, I think that looks good there. Save. How do I want, I guess I can. I'm thinking now, I don't know. I guess I'll leave the book there. I was going to move it, but I'll go ahead and leave it. I'll just make it smaller. So that book can be for desktop. This book is going to be for mobile. And instead of 350, I'm gonna do 150. So how do, you, how do you adjust the mobile settings without screwing up the desktop settings? That's the problem I'm having. Okay. Every time I go into, every, if I get it set the way I want on desktop and then go to mobile and I don't like it and I try moving stuff around on mobile uh, and I do that and then I go back to desktop and I screwed everything up on there. So I just did it in front of your eyes. So this image, Boy. desktop only. And now so you do a three card Monty in front of my eyes too. It doesn't necessarily mean I know how you did it. Well, that's why it's recorded and you're going to be able to go back and check it out. So now I will, but I'm just asking as I go. Sorry. Yep, that's okay. So now I'm going to adjust this font. Okay, I like that. And now I'm going to adjust the font and the button. So Let's see, 16, well, I think that will work. Just this font, looks good. All this, I already have that stuff dialed in. So we can look at the page, how you had it on mobile before. And then we can come over here and we'll look at how we have it on mobile now. And I think this is, actually, I think that book can be a little bit larger than that on mobile. There we go, that's better. And do you think the headline's a good size on the mobile? Let me look again. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. One of the things I teach against a little bit is not having this button available right when they have it on the page, but we'll leave it for this, like this for now. And we'll even notice that the pop-up, now we need to adjust the pop-up. So let's go back into show the pop up, the mobile side. This font needs to be smaller on mobile. That works. Uh, I'm okay with the size of the book. I'm okay with this. I definitely don't like that. So I'm going to make that 20 is where I usually am with those. And I think that's okay too. Yeah, that's good. So let me see, preview. Yeah, I think that looks great. Even if we go down to inspect it on mobile. Perfect. That looks good to me. I won't build the other page because I think that you guys kind of get the, the gist of this. But I'll share, I'll share this page with you, Barry, and you okay. can model the rest of this stuff with the rest of it. If you have any other questions, shoot me a message and I'll just build the other part as well. But these funnels, what I just built in front of you, clicking some buttons around, do you know how many business owners would give their firstborn? Well, I hope they wouldn't give their firstborn. But there is a <laughs> load of business owners out right now 
that what I just built in front of you in 10 minutes, or maybe I took 30 minutes because of my obsession with getting all the small components perfect, but that's it. That's all you do. I build it right in front of you guys. Stupid, stupid, simple that all of you already know. And it should be like fishing with dynamite to get customers and help them get their business online like I, I just built. So I'm going to shut this down, guys. I've got a bunch of messages coming in. But if you have any questions or if you want to give me your feedback on this ridiculous interview I did, I would love it. Other okay. than that, awesome. thank help, you. you're welcome. If I can help you, serve you, or certainly support you and your families in any way, I'm very easy to get a hold of. Stay safe, young man. All right, guys. Bye-bye. Okay.